Hey everyone, I'm Adam, and in this video we're going to be talking about the Interplanetary File System, or IPFS, and how you can easily integrate it into your applications. We're going to be covering what IPFS is simply, and what its importance is, then we're going to be talking about why you might want to add it into your applications, and then finally I'm going to briefly be going over an example of how you can add IPFS into your applications to let your users easily upload and store files on IPFS, and then how you can later display display those files on your website. Before we get into the video, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more quality Web3 content. We're putting out content every week, so make sure to subscribe if you guys are getting value out of it. Now, let's get into the first topic we want to talk about, which is what actually is IPFS? Now, as I mentioned before, IPFS stands for the Interplanetary File System, uh, which is a pretty confusing terminology at first. But in short, all it is is a distributed and decentralized file discovery network. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but um, the actual concept of what it is is pretty simple. It's just like other systems, like even your computer's file storage or something like AWS S3, in the sense that it's just another place that you can uh, sort of store your files. And that's important, for example, if you're building a website where you need to display videos or books or any type of content that you might want to store in a file format, then you need to store it somewhere, of course. But the place that IPFS differs from things like S3 is that the nature of how your files are stored is fundamentally decentralized. And what that means is that when you store your files on S3, for example, it's up to a single organization like Amazon to decide whether they keep your files there or whether they get rid of them permanently, which allows for things like censorship. But with IPFS, the file is distributed across multiple platforms and the system of IPFS lets your file basically be pinned from multiple places so that it's resistant to censorship. So if any one of those parties wants to take down your file, IPFS network still has it because it's stored in other places. So you can probably imagine this becomes very powerful. And as you start to imagine why you might want to add this into your application, the core thinking of it is, do you need your files to be censorship resistant, trustless, um, you know, permanent. If you if you need any of these qualities, which is often the case, then you might want to think about IPFS as a solution. So one example of this is if you're building an, an app with any NFTs. Of course, NFTs are supposed to be permanent and uh, decentralized. So of course, you want your NFT metadata to be stored in IPFS. And this is what a lot of NFT services, including Third Web, do today, is they automatically store those files in IPFS. So if you have an application where you want your users to upload NFTs, for example, you may want to immediately take files that users uh, send you and upload them to IPFS. Now, of course, there's some non-NFT smart contract use cases as well. For example, there is a website called Libgen or Library Genesis, which was a very positive use case of IPFS, where they took books that were censored in some countries and they uploaded them for people to view. And because these books were uploaded on IPFS, they couldn't be censored. And so people were able to get access to all the knowledge that they were uh, kind of being blocked from. With that covered, um, and hopefully you now have a sense for what types of use cases you might want to use IPFS for, let's actually dive into an example and see how we can add um, upload to our apps to let users upload files to IPFS, and that will let them upload any file, and then how we can use those uploaded files to later display them on our website. So let's get into the build. So now I've pulled up the docs for the third web storage solution. Uh, which lets us easily add IPFS to our apps. And I pulled up my terminal, and I'm actually going to start up a new app here by just typing in the npx third web at latest create dash dash app command. And what this is going to do is it's going to let us generate a new front end application. Uh, and we can use that front end application to actually integrate IPFS upload and download, uh, which is you'll see is going to be pretty simple as far as how many lines of code and how difficult the process is to actually integrate. So first we're gonna, of course, have to set up the application first, which is what this command is gonna do. And we are gonna have a couple choices to make because it lets you customize what specific type of application you may wanna use, whether you wanna use JavaScript or TypeScript, and then what front end framework you wanna use. Uh, so just simple uh, decisions like that. So I'm gonna call this um, my third web IPFS app, and I'm gonna choose to use Next.js and TypeScript. So this project is just gonna generate for us and I'll be back when it's ready. So the app has finished uh, building and so now I'm just going to CD into that folder there. You can see I tried that already. 
um, just to get into the app. And oh, I'm already in here. And then I'm just going to run the code dot command to actually open up a VS code tab for this and we can get started running our project. So you can see here, oops, I closed out the VS code. Let me try that again. Perfect. So before we get started, let's take a look at what's actually in our application. So if we look at the package.json file here, you can see that it automatically installed for us a couple important packages. The most important ones are the third web SDKs here, and that's what's going to actually allow us to add IPFS into our applications. And then you just see two uh, basic files here. So the first one, we have this third web provider, and that's important to wrap our app with just so that we can access the third web SDK in our app. So I'm going to head on over to the index file, uh, and we can delete all of this boilerplate. And we can actually get started with integrating IPFS into our app. So the first thing we want to do is let's make a, a place where users can come and upload their files, and those files will immediately get uploaded to and stored in IPFS. And so we can do anything with those storage links. We can use it on our website. Uh, we could store it in a smart contract. Um, we could upload that to a database. But for now, let's just look at the actual uploading to IPFS part and how we can let users do that. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to use a hook here that I'm going to import from the third web react SDK called use storage upload. You can see it's already completing for me there. And so I'm going to use that here. Uh, upload storage upload. And this hook is actually going to give us the capability to add IPFS to our app. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is head on over to the third web docs here. So now that we've used this hook, I'm actually going to copy paste in a snippet. Um, that easily lets us add uh, storage upload to our app. And then I'm going to explain everything as we go along. I'm just going to paste in this snippet here. Uh, and you can see we're using the use storage upload hook. And the next thing I want to do is import what we need here. So um, we could just import use callback from React. And we're going to use this package called Drop Zone, which is a very popular package just for, um, you know, letting people upload files uh, to the browser. And then from the browser, we're going to upload them to IPFS. So all I need to do here to use that is I'm going to come to the terminal and I'm going to actually add the drop zone package with yarn add react drop zone. And so that's going to add the use drop zone hook for us. And in the meantime, let's take a look at what's actually going on here. So uh, the first thing is, and I realize here that I accidentally unimported this uh, type from next. So let's take a look at what's actually going on in the file. So first we have the function we imported here called upload and whatever you pass into this function will be uploaded to IPFS and it will return you the URL of where it uploaded to, which is a publicly accessible URL. Um, and so then what we're going to do is we're going to create a component on our page, which we'll soon see that lets users upload files from their file system. Uh, which just cap gets captured by this use drop zone hook. And then whenever those files get uploaded, which we get through here, we're going to actually immediately pass them in to upload them to IPFS, and we can console log those URLs um, that we see there. So now that drop zone's imported, I can actually uh, import the use drop zone hook from that package we installed. And let's actually run our app now to see what we have so far. So I'm just going to run yarn dev here. And we could take a look at this URL localhost just to see our actual application uh, running and see what we have so far. So it shouldn't take too long to load. Hopefully it's starting up. And here we have our app. So we see this drop files here to upload them to IPFS. And we should just be able to click that. And you see that it prompts us to upload our files. So one quality of life thing I'm going to add here just because I think it's nicer, is I want to change this drop files uh, text to a button. And it's going to say, we can keep the text the same. And so if we go back to the app, then this should update. And there, it's a button. So now we can click it, and it will let us select files. So now I'm just going to select some files here. Let's say we want to upload this image right here. So I'm going to upload it. 
and it should automatically upload to IPFS. Now, we can't see anything here because we didn't configure it to actually do anything once we upload. But what we did tell it to do is log out the uh, URL of the IPFS file once it uploads. So let's see if we actually got that file. So you can see here that it's uploading. And now if we come over to the console, we can see that it gave us this IPFS URL uh, where it supposedly has uploaded our file to. So how can we actually go and look at this file now? So one way is we can try copy pasting this into the browser, but you'll see quickly that that URL doesn't actually work. And the reason is because many browsers don't automatically support IPFS. So this is a trick to viewing IPFS files. What you can actually do is access a public gateway, which is a way to access IPFS files from standard browsers. And so one of those is um, gateway.ipfscdn.io slash IPFS. And then you put whatever your IPFS URL was. And we can just wait for that URL to load. And you can see here immediately, we have that file that we just uploaded. And so we can see that it's actually already uploaded and stored somewhere that's publicly accessible. And so now what would be cool is if we could actually um, render this image and display it somewhere on our website now that we've uploaded it, uh, which is sort of the last step here. So the way we can do that is there's actually a super easy component that lets us do that. So what I wanna do here is every time I upload files, I wanna just save them somewhere so we can display them on the website. So I'm just gonna add a state variable uh, and we'll call it URIs. This is just a standard React syntax and we'll make it an array of strings. So we'll add a type here, string array, and I'm gonna import the use state hook from React. And now, uh, every time I upload files, like I said, I'm going to set uh, that URIs state variable to the URIs that we just got from the upload. So now the URI should be saved on our page. And the last thing I wanna do, which I mentioned, is that I want to be able to actually display these IPFS uh, files on the page, which is very simple. Again, just uh, one thing we need to import from the React SDK. So I'm gonna import um, the media renderer here, and you can see that it comes in autocomplete. And what the media renderer is, is a simple component that lets you just pass in an IPFS URL directly. And with that, it will just handle rendering the, the URL no matter what type of file it is. So, you know, we uploaded an image, but you can upload videos, 3D files, audio, and it will automatically handle for you how to render out those files on your page. So all you have to worry about is just passing it in an IPFS URL. So I am going to now create a section in my page right below my upload where I just wanna map over all the URIs and I want to display them on the page. So I'm just gonna um, return a media renderer component for each URI. And with each media render, we're gonna pass in the, first we're gonna pass in an altern like, uh, alternate image. This is just an accessibility thing. So we'll just call all of them image. And then we'll actually pass in the source, which is the IPFS URI. And it's gonna handle everything for us, including that um, resolving things from gateway URLs and things like that. And the last thing I have to do is add a key here. So React doesn't yell at me and I'm just gonna make the URI the key. So now if we take a look at our page, let's head over to it. And again, we have to upload files now uh, just so that it saves them and we have something to render. So we can see it uploaded and it should be rendering on the page soon, but I probably did something wrong here. So let's go back to the code and take a look at what could be wrong. Uh, let's wrap this in another div. This could be the issue. Or maybe I didn't even save the file. Let's see. Uh, let's upload to IPFS again. Hmm, so maybe our state is not being saved properly. Let's see. Are we actually saving the state? Let's see what happens when we console log the URIs. And let's refresh the page for good measure. So you can see the URIs being console logged here. Now when we upload, 
the files. And we can see URIs being updated and there we go. So you can see that the files all render out on the page. Um, and perfect. So you can see the images I just uh, displayed are rendered on the page. Now, one thing we might want to quickly do before ending this video is uh, control how big the size of this is because uh, you know it's a bit large. We want them to be the same size probably. So we should be able to come over here and add this width prop here. And we will say 400 pixels for each one. And now if we come back to the page and it looks like we'll need to refresh, which seemed to be the issue before as well. We can come upload these images again and let's see the progress. And there you have it. So we can already see that the images are perfectly defined on width. We can control that. And so now in just a few minutes, we've actually built out a site that lets users upload files to IPFS where they can be stored in a decentralized way. And then we can come fetch them and uh, actually display them later. So hopefully that video was helpful and hopefully it prompts some of you all to actually add and integrate IPFS into your apps. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely join our Discord. The link will be in the bio below. Uh, we have a super active community of Web3 developers. Whether you just wanna engage with other devs or ask questions or get help on anything, definitely recommend that. So hopefully the video was helpful. Uh, again, drop a like and subscribe if you got any value out of it, and we'll see you in the next one.